Um, to make sure you're in this right place, um, we're here to do a webinar on touch type and software with CAS type uh, is a company I've been working with um, for about six months now. Um, so it's a chance to kind of showcase their work. Um, so thank you for your interest. And um, while we get set up and everyone joins in, in the, your screen, you should be able to see a chat box. So if you're watching on a phone, maybe just tap the screen. I've just typed in hello. So if you can just um, say who you are and where you're watching from, just as a kind of just getting warmed up. Um, and then we'll get started and then I'll, uh, I'll share my screen shortly and then I'm going to bring in Keen and then we've got a number of questions and some demos to go through with you um, and introduce um, the kind of software to you and the importance of touch typing. So, yeah, so in the chat box, you just get used to the controls at the bottom uh, and just let me know who you're watching from. Um, so if I just introduce myself to start with while people are getting connected. Um, my name is Ross, i um, been a teacher for 25 years in secondary schools in London. Um, been blogging as Teacher Toolkit, which I'm sure you've seen through the ticket page or my social media, how you got connected. And um, I've been working with CAS um, for about seven, seven to eight months, um, looking at their software, helping them get the word out. Um, so we've decided to do a little free webinar for everyone just so you can get used to uh, what they do and um, how it can benefit yourself. You can share this um, resource with parents or it might be something you might want to consider for your school considering, uh, well, forget lockdown. It's a resource that you can use full stop. Um, so just while people get connected, um, I'm just going to bring in um, Keen uh, shortly and just for recording purposes and um, so the video will get circulated with everyone in the session obviously safeguarding if you're watching from home um, and I'm doing this from home uh, it's day 91 for me at home um, you know be conscious of any kids in the background and things like that so you might want to just turn your video off if you've got children behind you um, okay so um, Keen could you introduce yourself to everybody tell everyone what you do where you're, where you're speaking from, that type of stuff. Sure. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Keen, and uh, I'm the uh, MD of uh, CAS Type. Um, I'm based in Leamington Spa, but uh, our main IT office is based down in Bexhill on Sea, which is where the company was originally based from. And uh, basically, we've uh, uh, enhanced our touch typing software. It's been servicing the education industry for a long time. And we've enhanced it to make it truly inclusive so that it, it, it makes every, learning possible for everyone in the whole class together. And that's pretty much CAS in a nutshell. Great. So I'm going to thank Keen. So I'm going to show you my screen, everybody. Um, you should be able to see um, kind of we've got a set of PDF slides we're just going to work through. Um, so Keen, can we, uh, just to get started, can you tell us a little bit more deeply about um, CAS type and, and what it does and for people watching you've got the link on the screen there and I've already circulated with the vast majority the the touch typing test um, which you have and um, so you should be able to see my uh, slides on your screen so just maybe give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you can't okay right um, so it should, uh, Keen do you want to just ask people about the kind of uh, little test that they did to begin with what the person sure yeah was. no problem at all I, I mean what I do is I, I'll just tell people uh, firstly obviously thank you very much to yourself Ross and and thank you everyone for joining uh, but just wanted to let you know people you know often wonder what CAS stands for but it actually stands for keyboarding A to Z and the company is specialized in teaching keyboarding skills literally from the onset and you know the whole system was developed through uh, uh, research and um, scientific uh, a scientific approach so it's it's cutting out any uh, thoughts of oh should this work shouldn't this work it's actually fully based on research now um, it was developed about uh, 20 odd years ago and I'll, I'll come into that a little bit more further down on the screenshots uh, which you'll see and I'll also tell you a little bit more about uh, why the course has been updated why it's dare I say special in terms of uh, it, it actually it is used for everyone in the classroom not just only uh, special needs children uh, but uh, before we go on to that I, I think we need to ascertain that we still need to teach typing skills and uh, hopefully 
uh, you all would have taken the course at the little free typing test, which is on our website. I believe Nikki, I, I think you're here. So hello to you. Uh, I'm sorry uh, you, you had issues there. Uh, we, I have no idea why, but it must be something to do with the network which uh, you're you're coming out from. But I have actually asked Steve and IT to to take a quick little look at that. Okay, uh, so I'm going to um, just quickly interrupt Keen. Um, so for everyone watching, what we're going to do is I'm going to bounce lots of questions to Keen. Um, and talk you through the slides and then Keen's going to do a couple of demos as we go away uh, go through the slides I'm going to do my best to keep to time um, and if you can just place the occasional question in the chat box um, I'll, or um, I might just pause and ask for any general questions as we go through uh, for the next hour and then we'll, we'll do our best to answer some of your questions uh, so our plan is to walk you through the entire um, offering of CAS, the software, what it does, what impact it can have, and then hopefully that will um, address most of the questions. So uh, I guess first question from me, Keen, is, um, you know, I, I never learned to touch type. I think of my, uh, my son who's nine um, on his iPad and on his computer in school and at home and things. And again, it's pretty much hit and miss. So uh, why do you think it's important for us to teach touch typing? Well, Ross, if, if I can just ask you if you could just move on to slide number four, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, basically, we live in a world of computers now, now, and with onlining such a critical element for delivering and submitting work, be it in school, further education, we also have to remember that touch typing, it's, it's, although it's a fundamental skill, it's an essential life skill. Uh, we need to ensure that everyone, including our students, can work effectively and, and efficiently online. What you have to remember is, you know, it's not acceptable anymore to be typing with two fingers. Uh, it's not really a hard skill to learn. Uh, it's just like, you know, the analogy of driving a car. We have lessons. We, the reason we have lessons is to learn. You know, so often everyone dismisses typing. Touch typing 15, 10, 15 years ago was pretty much everywhere. Everyone was learning to touch type, but I think there's so much of expectation because of the gadgets and the gadgetry that we you know, are able to type. But if no one teaches us to type, how are we gonna learn? So, but important- Keen, sorry, I'm gonna keep interrupting you. Um, what, what is the phrase touch typing? Um, you know, where does it come from or what does it mean? Uh, well, touch typing is, uh, can I ask if you can just please go yeah, down to sure. screen four, Ross? Oops, there we go. You just interrupt me as much as you need. <laughs> we need some hard hitting questions. Uh, for some reason, the screen's not moving, Ross. Okay, I'm on slide five. Um, I'm hoping most people can see that. So um, you should have a, a list of reasons, right? right? And if not, I'm just going to come out my share and go back in. Hold on, everybody. Um, okay. Technical issues. Let me try and um, share that again. Um, so, so basically, I mean, touch typing is the ability to type with all your fingers and thumbs without looking at the keyboard. Uh, so that's that's pretty much in a nutshell what it is. Okay, can you but, see that uh, slide? Yep, we can see yep. those. So if I can ask you to pop back one to slide number five. Okay. Uh, so basically, this explains it. So when your students are touch type uh, are typing with just two fingers, I mean, some can be using a scribe or or speaking uh, using recognition software, they're actually using the conscious part of their mind. So this is the term they think as they do. Now this additionally creates mental load, which impacts productivity and actually stops people actually working in their, uh, to their potential. So if I can ask you to just move on to the next slide, please, Ross. Oh, there we go. Um, so, but when you actually touch type, students use all their fingers and the thumbs so basically the skill is automatized and it actually moves to the subconscious, which leaves them the conscious mind free to think and concentrate. And they can concentrate on their planning, their writing, their proofreading, their editing. And at the same time, we're increasing productivity and engaging independent working, full stop. So very similar to, as I mentioned earlier, with driving a car. Once you learn, it frees up the conscious mind. So, you know, when you've learned to drive, you're... You, you know, you can indicate, change gear, look in the mirrors all at the same time without even realizing you're doing it. And that's what we're trying to do with uh, touch typing. Uh, so Keen, um, I guess the key question is what makes this suitable for um, mainstream pupils as well as uh, students with learning needs? 
Okay, well, when we came, uh, when, when we joined CAS about five years ago, it was very important, you know, there, there are softwares out there which, which are very specific and, and generally cater for the mainstream, but we wanted to be truly inclusive and cater for absolutely everyone in the classroom. Uh, so the main difference was uh, we actually got involved with the Dyslexia Research Trust and we went through our whole course with them to uh, make it purely and truly inclusive. So everyone in the classroom, be children, students with dyslexia, dyspraxia, etc., uh, could all use the course. And so if everyone's working together, there are no differences. You as well as I know uh, with teachers, you know, it's so hard to sometimes differentiate or to zone off. Uh, and of course, the, the issues that gives with children themselves. So, um, you know, it's important to also realize that children get diagnosed at different times, at different stages of their, their lives, be it with dyslexia or differences. And, you know, how can they learn to read, write and spell if, if letters and characters are jumping around the screen? So what we developed with the Dyslexia Research Trust was a preference screen, which is a precursor to the actual course. And what this does is tailor the course to each individual student. Now, it's actually set to a basic default setting. So 80% of the students will be able to go on, click begin course, and then go straight into the course. But for that 10, 15% of students, uh, this is really key and critical prior to actually using the course. So can you I mean, do a little demo here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there were a few, obviously, additional things which we did in the course. Uh, we you know, introduced additional line spacing um, and uh, different fonts. But if I go on to, this is the live course. So every course uh, will actually open up with this screen. Uh, schools actually get two options. They get a standard edition as well as the dyslexia edition. So every dyslexia edition uh, will open with this. And basically the student will just go through these preference screens to make sure they can read what is in this uh, box or on the screen uh, comfortably. So blue, you, you, you may be aware of a certain frequency of blue. You may be aware of a certain frequency of yellow, which minimizes um, uh, blurring. And then there are several other fil filters which simply minimize white screen glare. You can change the font color to give added contrast. We've got a selection of several different typefaces, including two which we've actually licensed from Lexi Readable and some teachers will be aware of Open Dyslexic as a font uh, for ease of reading. The font sizes, uh, minimum font size on the, the, the course is 21 point uh, and we've also got an extra large font size as well. And what we, we did was we were actually went one step further. On the actual course, we've got an online keyboard present at all times. Now, uh, a lot of uh, teachers will know that uh, the keyboard is quite critical for students, especially students with dyslexia when they, they uh, buy a, a laptop or a desktop. And they always tend to choose keys with uh, black or, or white letters on a black keyboard. Uh, with our uh, of course, we've actually inbuilt a further one, which has got the chosen filter color on black keys as well. And simply once the student has read all this and they can read all that information clearly, all they do is click begin course and all those uh, settings are then um, integrated to the whole course for them. Uh, so that's uh, that. So I'll come back to you, Ross. Thank you. So so um you know it's you know it's got a lot of, a lot of great features um what i was um going to ask you next keen as i guess uh, uh, on this slide is you know if you think of all the um products you can download you know all the stuff that we buy you know i think of all the things i used to buy as a deputy head you know although i wasn't a pastoral leader but you know working closely with the senko and the pastoral uh, designated safeguarding lead um what what should teachers school leaders look out for when they download um or they access a particular type of software so we've got a list here um any any recommendations sure well i mean ross i think you're more than where i mean you're you're from that background and i'm not trying to bat the the teacher's cause but uh the bottom line is teachers today are not only expected to teach i mean you know in my day it was a teacher would actually just teach and then the child will go off but but now teachers are also parents they're counselors they're confidants they're protectors there's so much more so and they're also some you know responsible for safety uh while working online and you know this is absolutely paramount especially with children so when to teaching uh choosing software teachers should ensure that companies are reputable they do have strict <laughs> data policy 
uh, rules and regulations and they're actually governed i mean there are so many companies out there there is no governance no you know yes it's, it's fine to say uh, we do not share your data but the bottom line is you you need accountability uh, in the same way that everyone looks to teachers for accountability yeah. i mean I, I, I'll, I'll add in some things that i would typically look for but maybe other people in the chat box can add in some questions or some things that you would look for and um, for me of course you want it to be recommended from colleagues you want it to be reasonably priced and um, you want all the safeguarding features considered you want it to integrate with all your kind of current bits of software uh, your single site single license fees those, and set sign-ons and I guess you really want to know that's going to make a difference to your kids but it's going to be quite easy for teachers to use and you can get that support you know the training that you need and it's regularly updated so that would be my kind of headlines um, I don't know if anyone else has got any other uh, glaring omissions or any particular questions on um, what you should look for when you, you want a bit of software but um you know I, i've worked with cast seven months it covers all those things um so any any questions i'm just gonna we've been going 15 minutes just um if anyone wants to unmute their microphone just ask a question um or grab a quick sip of water uh, and just <laughs> pause for 30 seconds uh, while we just digest what we, the, you know the general introduction yeah I, I think it's also important to note that you know especially for teachers you know uh, with IT sometimes teachers do get scared of IT especially if you're not in that in the IT background and the way CAS has been developed is to make it really really easy for everyone to use I mean you know there's no point in developing software which is complicated I mean you know the whole idea of CAS is is that we teach typing quickly uh, the students learn and then they move on they actually implement what they've learned and uh, you know the the monitoring for teachers in the background has to be simple, has to be easy, and quick. Um, so Keen, you say um, you know it's tried and tested and a proven method. Could you elaborate on on, on what that what you mean by that? Sure. Um, well, uh, if I can ask, you can move on the slide. So, so basically, the the, the CAS course uses an uh, an accelerated learning teaching method. Now, this actually incorporates brain balance and muscle memory. So what we do is we teach the A to Z keys using just five scientifically designed phrases. Uh, now, this is specifically structured, and I'll show you this when I demonstrate the course live shortly. But the method was developed through research by the same team of experts responsible for producing over 55 RSA NBQ level computer and office skills courses. The product was then trialed and tested by 18,000 students per year for over, th for over three years in 300 private training centers across the UK. And it was only released to market when there were some, you know, some huge um, hurdles over across. And that hurdle was 93% of the students learning to type. Now we are talking young adults uh, from the age of 16 to 18 learned to touch type the A to Z keys within 90 minutes, which is where the phrase came from. Uh, the, the, the course was then taken, I mean, obviously this was through huge investment with the 3i group. Uh, the course was then taken to the Open University. They were so impressed with it. They trialed it. Uh, they wrote a white paper on it and they were so impressed with the effectiveness of it. They deployed it to all 90,000 students each year for over 14 years. And the white paper is actually on our white uh, on our website for everyone to 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 read if they want to. So Keen, I'm going to push you. Can we get a demo so we can see um, how it works? Sure, no problem at all. So I'm just going to. I'll, I'll, I'll start to ask some questions while you load that up. So if I stop sharing my screen and you can. Sure. Okay. Um, so I'm going to set this to default settings, uh, just so that it's easier for everyone here. But. Uh, if we move on, so obviously we, we sell the course to the UK and the US. We have a lot of schools in, in both uh, regions. Uh, I'll select Casm sound, but I'll turn the sound off uh, just purely to, to save uh, text actually appearing on the screen. Um, and basically, so, so this is the main menu. It's very, very simple and it's been designed to be used independently and without supervision. It's, especially been designed not to overload the working memory. Now, what we have to remember is we're going to teach typing skills. We want to teach them effectively. We don't want to bring in loads of uh, any adverts. We don't want to bring in any distractions. We just want to 
focus on the core and then teach the students how to type. Now the course is multi-sensory, so it engages the major senses of sight, sound and touch simultaneously, which is why it's so effective. And it is very, very deliberately presented in a very simple manner. There's a huge amount of research, which is what I've told you, which has gone into this, but it's, it's, it's imperative so that from your point of view, all you have to do is minimal teacher intervention. You tell your students to start at the top and work through each module in order. Uh, so it basically, um, if I start at the top module, flying start. Now, each of these is literally two to three minutes long. They only need to go into flying start once. They won't need to go into after that. And uh, basically, it introduces the navigational tool. It gives you a few little tips on how to use CAS shortcuts, for example, using the backwards and the forward arrows uh, instead of using the, the mouse, if that's what you prefer to do. And importantly, there's also a, a, a module here on posture uh, regarding RSI while sitting at a computer. Now, we've actually got a City and Gills course and they actually developed this course for us and they didn't want us to only teach typing skills. They actually wanted us to teach students about the importance of sitting properly, about RSI and what happens, you know, and, and it's so easily uh, avoided. Uh, so we were so impressed with that module, we actually put it into all the courses, uh, which is basically what you're seeing here. So it's just a few um, screenshots which, which give you an idea of that. So I'll come on to demonstrate the navigational tool shortly. Uh, but uh, so, so that is the first module and the second module, the basics, is actually the most important part. Now, this is actually where the student learns to touch type the A to Z keys using our five structured phrases. Now, the phrases may seem a little bit bizarre, but please remember they've been scientifically structured to teach certain letters on the keyboard using certain fingers. Now, the first phrase, sorry, I, have I lost my sharing screen? Uh, apologies, I'll just go back to it. Okay, I'm back there. Okay, so, so the first phrase is designed to teach the first two fingers and the thumbs. So uh, if you look at your keyboard, you'll be able to see the first two fingers and thumbs, which is what will pay for that phrase. And then as we move on, it's a gradual introduction of other fingers. Uh, and it's building up the full 20 odd six letters of the alphabet there. And at the end of that, there's a small little test which actually proves to you that you can actually touch type the A to Z keys. Now, each of these sections takes typically 15 to 20 minutes to do. That's all it takes. And, you know, for teachers, obviously, we, we give school uh, lesson guides. So we would suggest, depending on the child, if it's uh, uh, primary age, then we'll say, you know, break it down into weekly sessions or daily sessions, or obviously for homeschooling, uh, we'll say, you know, possibly one session a day or it's for the teachers to decide uh, whichever is uh, preferred. Uh, obviously, the course is used at lunchtime, school clubs, as well as after school clubs. So, so basically, uh, we, we say to teachers, you know, break it down into modules. It doesn't all have to be done in one foul swoop. But for the older children, we say, you know, the 16 year old pluses, do all this in one foul swoop, it's only 90 minutes, but what it's doing is, it's teaching you where your fingers should go. And then once we've built a little bit of muscle memory, we then go on to develop that further. But what I'm gonna do is, I'm just actually gonna go into the first phrase to just give you a basic uh, overview. So this is the navigational tool, this is the adult navigational tool, there's a junior Casbert for, for junior uh, children, and schools get both editions for free, uh, or I say for free, included, as well as obviously the dyslexia and the um, standard edition. And if we move on here to the main, uh, 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 what is this? The, the main menu, the main interface, sorry, uh, I'm, I'm running along qu too quickly here, but uh, pull me back if I'm going too fast, Ross. Uh, but this is the main menu. So as you can see, the, 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 the screen is divided with, presented with two screens at the top. It's done that way specifically because the eye travels from left to right. So it keeps the head looking up all the time. And as you can see, the cursor is actually moving. So it's ready to type in that inbox uh, from uh, the off. Now, CAS has evolved over the course of the last year or two. Historically, uh, that 
typing area would not open until the audio had finished. But uh, we've adapted because uh, we were told um, or research has shown that uh, kids nowadays, they're born with laptops, they're born with iPads in their hands. So they want to actually get on moving. They don't necessarily want to, and want to listen to all the audio. And the difference with children and adults is children are not scared to try. Adults, as we get older, we get scared to push buttons. But with CAS, you mustn't be scared to push buttons. Uh, the bottom line is that comes with muscle memory and in the stages after. So another interesting feature of the course is obviously there's a, a keyboard on screen at all times. Now, this is really quite important because this naturally encourages the student to always look up. Uh, built into the keyboard is a key guide. So if you click anywhere on the key guide, a set of hands appear. And if you're not sure of, uh, which uh, uh, finger presses which letter, you just type the letter and the, the finger will uh, press to that letter. Obviously, I've got the audio off at the moment. If the audio was on, it would actually sound out which uh, letter key, uh, presses which key. And then to go back to the course, simply just press anywhere on that same key guide again, and you're back to exactly the position which you left off. Keen, can we just let people hear the software just announce the letters? Sure. Type if again. R. E okay. okay, so I'll go back to sound off. Um, so, yeah, so on the right here, we have the navigational tool. So clicking on the beak will uh, repeat what has just been said. Going left, we'll go back a screen. Uh, clicking on the right, we'll move forward. And obviously clicking on the feet will actually take you out of the course. Uh, there's a little help menu down here. So the help menu will give you a guide of actually what I've actually just run through without having to come out of the course and look at the, the course guides. Sound on and off will literally, uh, if you want to work, for example, in a library setting or whatever, and uh, you can just click there. Again, it saves you having to go out. And there's a little green bar progress uh, bar at the bottom, which shows how far you are through the course. The slow-mo button over here on the right, uh, a lot of our teachers use that, uh, especially in the special needs department. Uh, they ask their students to use that mode. And basically that is original version of CAS, whereby you have to listen to the audio before that typing window will open. But that again is down to preference and it's just purely a question of uh, 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 the, the individual's preference. Uh, so if I move on through CAS, you can see uh, on, on the right screen over here, what we're doing is we're building up that phrase, if Mike jived. And when we reach the end of the phrase, uh, which only takes, as I said, 15 to 20 minutes, uh, basically it just outlines to you that you've now learned eight keys on the keyboard and to take a, a short break if you need one before you move on. After each phrase, there's a little um, uh, animation uh, designed to encourage the kids and the, the, the junior phrases, uh, the, the, the animation is a little bit more risque. And would you believe, I, I think statistics uh, which we have, which show the majority of students, even in secondary, always go on to the junior phrases first. <laughs> they seem to have more fun with that. Um, so as I said, uh, the other uh, phrases simply build up. So by the time you finished last extra quiz, you literally can type all uh, characters on the, the keyboard and then you're presented with a little text. Cars will now measure your ability to touch type the A to Z keys. You can repeat it as often as you wish, but don't look at the keys. If you make mistakes on the set. Wow. Wow. I'm just going to go through this quickly. And I'm going to make some mistakes. Um, I'm going to tell you something else also interesting about CAS, which uh, City and Guilds were very, very pleased with. Um, through all the learning modules, you can actually make mistakes as you're actually learning. Um, but through all the uh, testing uh, modules, you cannot make a mistake. You have to get the word completely right before you can move on. And this is what builds on that extra bit of muscle memory. So here we can see the uh, letters which I was actually having problems, which I made mistakes on there, were well, the letters A to Z. So I can either return back to the basics to uh, deal with the uh, phrases which deal with that, or I can just carry on. Uh, Cans will now measure your...
So it's it's purely. Sorry, I'll just turn that sound off. It's purely down to again user preference. Now, interestingly, the course is designed to be worked in a non-linear fashion. So the whole idea is you can go back and 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 fro uh, to enhance or to 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 re. Uh, relearn any phrases, whichever you're having any problems with. Uh, the next phrase, uh, module, just do it, is uh, basically offering extra uh, further exercises with additional vocabulary. And if I just quickly forward through here, uh, you'll be able to see uh, some of the additional vocabulary uh, popping in here. And what we have to remember is what we need to do is build muscle memory and this is key for this section the just do it uh, it works especially well for students especially with dyslexia because what's happening now is we're ingraining spellings to memory so what that does is it reduces the likelihood of transposing or misspelling words what we're trying to achieve is that spellings simply become a series of finger movements and pattern on the keyboard. If you can play the piano, you'll be able to learn to type very, very quickly. You know, uh, if you play the piano or drive a car as an analogy, you know, you just play without even realizing what you're doing. And that's exactly what we're actually uh, doing with Kaz. And the rest, I'll be honest with you, uh, the, the least used module of all of them, because this is where we learn the shift, the number and the punctuation keys. Uh, generally, we tend to find the students will uh, learn the A to Z keys. Obviously, they'll learn how to put the shift on as well, because that, that makes learning very, very quick as well. And uh, generally, they'll be typing at 50 to 60 words per minute just using that. The students who really want to get onto a different level uh, will learn the numbers and the punctuation keys and they'll go through this module. Finally, uh, this is the, the last module, which is called Speed Builder. And this is where we uh, increase speed and accuracy. Now, if, if you've noticed, at no point through any of the learning modules are we worrying about speed. Unlike other typing tutors, you know, you maybe have to get a certain badge or you have to uh, get a certain word per minute before you can move on to the next uh, module. Kaz, we don't do that. Uh, during all the learning, learning is learning. What we're trying to do is get the thing, we're, we're wheedling out all the bad habits because everyone types and they're all typing incorrectly. So we need to get rid of those bad habits and we need to train new habits. So all the learning modules, and bear in mind, each one of those is only 15 to 20 minutes long, are designed to get the, the fingers moving in the right direction because obviously dexterity is the key issue here. Uh, the first two fingers and thumbs, lots of dexterity, but the little fingers and the, and the ring finger is sometimes really quite difficult to move. So that is why that uh, the learning, uh, it, it, you can go, progress through the learning by, with making mistakes. You're a teacher, you know, you're all teachers, you know that if you can constantly wrap students or, uh, you know, they get disheartened, they get... Um, uh, they start to lick our swear. So through the learning modules, it's important to learn through mistakes. And this has all come through the research, which was developed 15 to 20 years. Can you give us a quick demo of this screen? Sure. Uh, Is it literally you would have to type a sound? Okay. Okay. So, so basically, I'll put the sound back on. So, it, so if I make a mistake, uh, it'll make a sound. So I, I, I can't uh, move on to the next letter un until I've actually uh, typed in the correct word. Now that's really important because obviously we're building muscle memory and we're ingraining spelling. Uh, at the end of each phrase, I mean, uh, the, the student can actually see their accuracy in words per minute on a score up here. But all this data the reason there are 20 phrases in Speed Builder is because that's what has been designed to build muscle memory. So after 20 phrases, that information is then saved, sorry, in the My Results section up here. And simultaneously, that data is then saved in the teacher's admin panel. So teachers can see the progress of uh, their students and how they're doing. Um, and, and that's pretty much the course. I mean, obviously each user panel has user guides which can be seen here uh, has a results panel and obviously you can change your preferences um, and you can access the course as well through it so that is pretty much the course from a, a user's perspective the teachers do have an admin panel which i won't go through now 
uh, but uh, we do have uh, screenshot demos as well as uh, you're more than welcome to join me for my own webinars. I think uh, frozen there, so I'll try and get my slides back on. Um, oh, there we go. Um, okay, so I've got a couple of questions um, to pose to you, Keen, and then uh, I'll take some from the chat box and from everyone else. So a um, couple of things. Uh, you, there's a, a, there's a tournament, isn't there? So on the slides, uh, folks, these are just the walkthrough that Keen has just gone through. So we're going to send you all these to kind of uh, support um, the webinar recording so you can have a little look through these later but keen um, tell me more about the uh, the tournament and the city and guilds license so here's the, to uh, the touch type okay. okay now the tournament's really quite key and we we actually put brought this on board because of from a request from a couple of head teachers and what they really wanted to do was to really engage the parents and encourage the students to learn i mean there's lots of typing software programs out there which you know, teachers will monitor or, you know, you can't monitor or, or you know, if you leave to students' own devices, you know, will they do it, won't they do it? But what we wanted to do was to really encourage both schools, uh, teachers, as well as students to actually engage. So the whole idea of the typing tournament is, look, let's get as many kids and schools involved as we can. Uh, the, the winning school will get a free, a free renewal of their CAS license. Uh, they'll receive a CAS touch typing trophy. They'll be showcased on the website and celebrated on uh, media, etc. The student will get a, a, a free, uh, obviously, a winner's certificate. And if 14 years or, or older, they'll get a free, or they'll get a City and Guilds license. And we will hold this license for students until they're at the age should they need to. Mm -hmm. But th th this has proven really quite key. We started for the first year this year, and um, we, we've had some excellent. Uh, feedback. Um, the new uh, typing tournament will start in September. I think the, the, the student who's leading at the moment is from a school called Shrewsbury and he's uh, a master fantastic total of 65 words per minute, which is not bad for a student who started to learn, um, uh, well he actually started uh, late last year and it was quite encouraging, uh, for, especially from our point of view as well, to, to know that. Uh, uh, thanks, so um, uh, the City and Guilds, there's a question in the chat box I'm going to read from Caroline. Um, so is the City and Guilds accredited when you do the course or is it something else is the, is the question? Right, okay, no, the, the City and Guilds, are sure, once you've done the course, and, and basically once you've done the course, the student will actually get in, in well, uh, there, are, there are two options. There's an individual option and we've now got an invigilated version. Now the invigilated version is, was designed, we've got special uh, approval and authority from City and Guilds to do that, whereas the teacher will sign a declaration to just confirm that all the, that the, you know, the environment is correct, because generally for City and Guilds we need to be assured that the student who's taking the test is actually taking the test. So you know, by default we can now push that over to the teachers, obviously they then don't, all they need to do is to um, load in the student's date of birth because for City and Girls the student has to be 14 years of age minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, now all the teaching will do is they'll uh, confirm that uh, this, the environment is correct, that the student is the correct student taking the test and they will actually uh, authorise that student. So once the student passes that that module and they can take this test as many times as they want it's not as uh, it's not just a once only mm -hmm. uh, so once that student has passed the test literally the teacher will generate the certificate for that student the minute that, that certificate is generated the student gets emailed a copy or the teacher gets emailed a copy and we also get emailed a copy and when we get that copy we then notify city and guilds city and guilds will then submit a digital badge for that student Unfortunately, it takes about 28 days for it to happen. Uh, but you know, the, the, currently they're running about between anywhere between five and seven days. So yeah, just a couple of questions for you, and then we'll uh, uh, we'll go on to costs for everybody. Um, question from Helene: um, Is it a so, uh, so in terms of the software? Do you need to uh, download it to your desktop like a client install, or is it uh, something you log into online? Right, we've got two options. Uh, sorry, was it Cindy? Uh, this is from Helene. Helene, Helene, uh, we've got two options. The preferred option is the online edition, uh, where we host uh, the, the software on our cloud 
<laughs> and literally all students can log in uh, from home or school or or wherever they've got an internet connection so that that seems to be the preferred version we do have a download version and we do have a scorn version as well so we have several schools who use the scorn version uh which then integrates into their moodle the scorn version also is very popular for the universities uh, but it, it just depends on uh, on your environment, uh, which you have there at the, at the school. But generally, I'd say probably 90, 95% of schools use the online. Okay, another question, Keen. Um, how long does it take to get the skill? Now, I know that's a hard question, because if it's a uh, primary student or a secondary student, um, how often it happens during the week? Um, have you got a rule of thumb? Uh, well, uh, the, the, the course has been designed to teach the A to Z keys in 90 minutes. Now, I'm not going to lie to you and say to you, you're going to be touch typing 40 words per minute. But what, what you have to bear in mind, that typing with two fingers, you can generally type it between 20 to 25 words per minute. Now, we have a free typing test on our website, which unfortunately, Nikki, and I believe someone else hasn't been able to do. But we'll try and sort that out. But basically, 70% of people who take that test, and we have roughly about 1,000 tests take on that within every couple of months. 70% of the people who take that test type at the average word per minute, which is 17 or 18 words per minute. Now, that's quite horrendous. Now, that's taking out of the equation all the people who abandon tests. That's also taking out of the equation all the people who type at over 35 words per minute. So if, you know, typing at 35 words per minute is typing with both hands and uh, with both, uh, with both hands and, and fingers on, on all the keys. Now, generally, as a, as a rule of thumb, young adults will learn to type significantly well and improve on the, on the previous within four to five days. Uh, but that is obviously dedicated young individuals who mm -hmm. want to learn. Um, the, the whole way the course has been designed is to, to be able to break it down. I mean, obviously, from a young adult or a young adult learner's perspective, we say do that whole course the basics in one module 90 minutes mm -hmm. and then it's a it's a question of practice but generally as a rule of thumb i mean even city and girls um they've assured the course they've uh, we've also got a cpd certification on the course as well and you know four hours learning minimum uh and and we're, yeah. we're enhanced on what we were I'm doing push you on to cost now keen so uh, let everyone know um the licenses available and the costs Okay, so, so what I've done here is I've only shown you the online courses. Obviously, uh, these are up to date and you'll be able to see on the website if you wanted the SCORM or a download. We do sell downloads into uh, a lot of the councils who buy for children uh, where they're giving laptops to. Uh, and, but typically, they will buy through resellers or they're welcome, for example, Norwich buy through us, uh, Yorkshire buy through resellers. So, uh, you know, each to... Is to, is to suit each individual specific. So the reason we've got smaller licenses is purely for some schools who want to use CAS only for their special needs department, but obviously we've got a, a, a multitude of schools who, uh, obviously middle schools will, will get licenses for up to 500 students and whole school roles is for up to 1,000 users. So it can work out to as little as 60, 70 pence per student. Please bear in mind all those prices include VAT, so you get all the VAT back. Um, with regards to the city and guilds, obviously a huge proportion of the city and guilds, we, we actually have to pay to them uh, for the issuance of uh, the uh, assured certificate and badge. Uh, but what we've done is uh, we've got two options now because we've had a lot of teachers coming to us because they actually want to take this as part of their uh, O-level digital uh, um, skills uh, learning. So, so what we've done is with, this has only been ready for launch uh, earlier uh, I think it was late last week, and it's really dramatically reduced the pricing down. So learn on the CAS uh, learning modules, and then just buy uh, the individual. If I can just chip in with a, a rule of thumb. So obviously, as a, a prominent blogger, I've had lots of companies come to me over the years with software and things like that. And um, when I was a deputy head buying in licenses for my teachers or for my pupils, Kind of broad rule of thumb was anything between three to five pound per per pupil or per teacher. Um, so when you look at Kaz's numbers here, um, you know as as Keen said, it's coming in below a pound per pupil, which I think is uh, exceptional value, really. Um, so I hope that kind of helps. Um, Keen, if we just kind of wrap things up for everyone, we've got a, a slide here in terms of I had a question earlier, I think from Nikki, um, uh, mentioned the company Nessie Fingers. Um, sure. What makes CAS different? 
Okay, well, Nikki, uh, I, I, I never um, go against the competition because I, I think that would be very unfair for me to do so. But uh, all I'd ask you to do is, I mean, we have a free trial of CAS on our site. Uh, you will see the difference. Nessie Fingers is very much gay to a very young age group, uh, which is uh, pretty much where it's geared to. CAS is geared to students of all ages. So we're starting from six years onwards. Uh, Please also do bear in mind we've got uh, an accelerated learning teaching method. Now, what, what I'd also like to, to make, because uh, obviously I, I don't like, I like hitting the, the, the big questions straight on because, you know, that's what you want to hear. You don't want to waste time. Obviously, there are other softwares out there, BBC Dance Map, you know, I can quite safely speak about uh, as well as others. But, you know, what we, you, you get with CAS is because you're paying for us this, everything is secure with completely ico.org registered so uh, you know we we actually succumb to our higher power we we're, we're accountable uh, there will be no uh, advertising no distractions no malware where uh, both uh, windows as well as apple developers to protect all the software all student data is protected Please remember, we've got our accelerated teaching method, which generally takes 90 minutes to learn the A to Z keys. A lot of these other softwares, there's no, you know, yes, you know, they have lots of fantastic videos or whatever, but bottom line is, you don't want to spend hours upon hours upon hours on software teaching typing skills. And you're you back by research, which is really yeah, important to do. And session. then move on. Um, uh, so there's the, the kind of case study page. If I just, um, Put your website on Keen, which is there. If you tell me where to press and just point okay. things out to people in terms of the free trial, for example. Okay, so if you could go to the for education button, please, Ross. This one here, okay. Yeah. And then if Don't you close the schools, trust me, I need to turn this off. <laughs> education. Uh, where well, are we going? Okay, so yeah, please scroll down to uh, under your video there. Okay. The, test uh, okay, yeah. the free trial button, and, and above it, there's a, a case studies button. So, yeah, for a free trial, we'll give you a free 14 day trial. So, please, uh, you know, teachers, if you if please take the opportunity, log on, get a free trial, and learn to type yourselves as well, please. I mean, that could be my the little thing which I could uh, give to you. So, so, please do that, and then please do have a look and read through these case studies. We've got some video testimonials on there as well. Um, which are really quite uh, quite impressive, and you know, and please do think about CAS not just for your SEN dyslexic students, but please do think about CAS for the whole classroom. The reason we developed it so specifically as we have done was so that everyone in the class could actually learn together. There's no differentiation. What we're hoping to do next year is is that at the moment schools get two versions, the teacher can choose the standard or the dyslexia edition, but hopefully from next year there'll be just one version, uh, which is what we do for all our further higher education and our business courses, there's just one version which, is, which opens with a preference screen. Uh, we've had some fantastic, fantastic reviews. Uh, all we need to do is we need to get the word out there and uh, for, for you all to see how, how good the actual course is. Uh, okay, so, um, we have one wrap it up there. Um, so there's loads of case studies. You know where the free trial is um, or, uh, under my mugshot on the, the site. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I think we've covered everything. We'll send you the slides. I'll decompress the video. It'll take about... Uh, an hour or so and I'll send it over through Eventbrite. Um, if you've got any questions, kind of just stay on the line and unmute yourself and then Keenan and I will be happy to answer questions for the next five minutes or so. Otherwise, you're free to go. And thank you for joining um, me here yet again. And thank you Keenan for your time. No problem. Ross, can I just say one more thing uh, with regards to CAD as opposed to other softwares, we're the only ones which have got all these certifications. For example, we're with NACE, we're with BSA, uh, Sitting Girls, obviously. Oh, here, yeah. okay. and, and we've won uh, several awards within the last year. So uh, that, that is a big, big different, differentiator. Okay, any questions, folks? Unmute yourself. Otherwise, um, feel free to hang up. Uh, and again, thank you. My name is Ross. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, any questions? You, Justine, did you hold your hand or Caroline? Okay. Yeah. Caroline, um, Justine. Yeah, sorry, I've, I've put some in the chat box. But um, so I work in a huge school. Uh, I work in more than one huge school, actually. But I work in Blackpool and um, they've got about 500 in 10 and 11 and 750 in 789. 
So they can only do the City and Guilds for 10 and 11, is that right, firstly? Uh, yes, so, so we have to start at them. I mean, basically, we've, we've done it so that the, if the teachers can start introducing the children to typing, say, the year before, uh, they can only take the actual City and Guilds test when they're 14. Right, so okay. from Words, uh, Carolyn, uh, that's where we need to be. Uh, it was actually 15 years of age, but uh, we got special dispensation from City Girls literally only probably two to three weeks ago through a request from another teacher. At, uh, I think it's uh, Griffin or Lee Academy who are starting CARES in uh, September. Okay. So you pay the cost of the child's learning how to do it, the four hours minimum, you say, and then there'd be a price on top to get the City and Guild certificate. Yes, so, so, so the cheapest way to, to do it would be to, uh, yes, buy the, the school license or for how many students you want, uh, get them proficient. You as a teacher will be able to see how the, they monitor their progress. And basically all the, for example, the testing within the City and Guilds module is actually in the course. So if they practice in the course on the, on the long phrases, that is what they will be presented with in the City and Guilds. So there's not going to be any surprises there. So uh, that is a, a, a very, very good point of uh, using learning to type with CAS. But obviously the reason we've also separated is because teachers have actually also said to us, you know, they, kids that have learned to type and they like to do the sitting girls. So, you know, so that's why we've separated it as well. Okay. Um, and my next question, I suppose, is if you are going to go across a mat, would that reduce the price? Yes, uh, across mats, we're, we've actually got a, a fantastic offer at the moment. Uh, we've got two or three mats coming on board in September. We've got one who started last month. So yeah, I mean, it, it basically is fifty percent off the price. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's designed to make it very, very attractive, Carolyn. Yeah. Thank you, Carolyn. Is Justine still there with a question, or anybody else? Either use the chat box or unmute yourself on your video. You should be able to mute. Um, can I just ask, so would we get invoiced separately then for the City and Guild certificate? Uh, yes, that's how it would work. Uh, sorry, Sarah. Uh, so, yes, Sarah. Yeah. yeah, Sarah, so, so yes, uh, I mean, you can either buy it through the website or if you just get in touch with us, we, we will then invoice you um, separately for that. Okay, uh, great. But, uh, but yeah, there, there are no issues with that. We, we don't have any problems with, give, for example, giving you, if, if you wanted a, a license for 10 students or 100 students, we've got no issues with uh, assigning you the license and then invoicing on uh, after. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Anybody else? I think we might have lost Justine. Let me just double check. Anybody else with questions? Otherwise, this is your last chance. <laughs> uh, so I'll send the video, the slides in about an hour or so's time. Please check your event bright. Um, my name is Ross. I've been your host. Keen, thank you very much for sharing your great piece of software. I think um, just to conclude, regardless of it being locked down, it's a great piece of software. I think you'll agree it's exceptional value. And in a, in a period of time where we're all on our devices, um, I think it's quite an important skill to learn and what you what Keenan will have demonstrated is it's backed by lots of research and neuroscience and memory and the way the platform set up is very simple to use and I think we'd all benefit from testing ourselves in terms of our touch our touch type and speed and skill and um, so I'll finish there thank you everybody thank you Keen. thank you very much Ross thank you everyone for joining and thank you everyone for joining bye now bye bye